The casting process for the 1967 movie, The Graduate, was a careful selection of talents to bring the story to life. The director, Mike Nichols, was determined to find the right actors who could embody the complex emotions and relationships in the film. For the role of Benjamin Braddock, Nichols wanted someone who could portray the character's youthful confusion and vulnerability. After seeing Dustin Hoffman in a play called A, and being impressed by his performance, Nichols decided to cast him, despite Hoffman being relatively unknown at the time. This decision proved to be pivotal, as Hoffman's portrayal of Benjamin became iconic. The search for Elaine Robinson, Benjamin's love interest, was also extensive. Catherine Ross, who had previously worked with Nichols and Doubtfire, was eventually cast. Ross's chemistry with Hoffman was undeniable, and their on-screen relationship became a central focus of the film. Anne Bancroft, an accomplished actress, was chosen to play the role of Mistress Robinson, Benjamin's seductive neighbor. Bancroft's audition left a lasting impression on Nichols, and her performance as the alluring, and manipulative character became one of her most memorable roles. The casting of The Graduate was a crucial part of the film's success. Each actor brought their unique talents and chemistry to the screen, creating a captivating and enduring story that continues to resonate with audiences today. Mike Nichols, the director of The Graduate, brought a unique vision to life in this 1967 classic. He adopted a naturalistic style favoring handheld cameras and shooting on location to create a realistic and intimate atmosphere. This approach was a departure from the more theatrical styles of the time. Nichols was influenced by the French New Wave movement and its emphasis on character-driven narratives and innovative visual storytelling. He also drew inspiration from the social upheavals of the 1960s, using the film to explore themes of disillusionment, aimlessness, and generational conflict. To bring out the best in his cast, Nichols fostered a collaborative environment. He worked closely with actors Dustin Hoffman and Anne Bancroft, encouraging them to contribute their own ideas and improvisations. This collaborative spirit extended to the crew as well, with Nichols working closely with cinematographer Robert Surtees to create the film's distinctive visual style. Nichols' approach to directing The Graduate was characterized by his attention to detail, his willingness to experiment, and his commitment to capturing authentic performances. His vision for the film helped to create a work that continues to resonate with audiences today. The Graduate is a classic 1967 movie that has stood the test of time. It tells the story of a recent college graduate, Benjamin Braddock, who is struggling to find his way in the world. The film is known for its humor, drama, and iconic soundtrack. I still remember the first time I watched this movie. I was struck by the relatability of Benjamin's character and the timeless themes of confusion, identity, and love. The Graduate has since become one of my all-time favorite movies, inspiring me to pursue a career in film. Throughout the years, I've heard countless stories from people whose lives have been impacted by this movie. From inspiring career choices to providing comfort during difficult times, The Graduate has left a lasting impression on many. Do you have a cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. As we delve deeper into the fascinating world of The Graduate, you'll discover many surprising and shocking facts about the making of the movie, its impact on popular culture, and its enduring legacy. So, keep watching. The 1967 movie The Graduate was filmed primarily in Southern California, with the main character's house located in Beverly Hills. The set design was a crucial aspect of the film, particularly the iconic image of Dustin Hoffman's character, Benjamin, lounging on a floating raft in his family's elaborate swimming pool. The production team constructed a full-scale replica of the house and pool on a soundstage for interior shots. One of the film's most memorable scenes, where Benjamin is instructed to just watch in a department store, was shot at the now-defunct Bullock's Wilshire in Los Angeles. The production team faced the challenge of filming in a public space without disrupting shoppers, using creative techniques to minimize the crew's visibility. Locations for exterior shots included the University of California, Los Angeles, and several Southern California beaches. The production team also constructed a replica of a Berkeley campus building on the UCLA campus. During filming, the production faced logistical challenges, such as coordinating schedules for the large cast and managing locations. The film's tight budget required innovative solutions, such as using existing locations and set pieces whenever possible. One notable technique employed during production was the use of a relatively new technology, the zoom lens, which allowed for more dynamic and expressive camera work. 
This, combined with the film's unconventional narrative structure and soundtrack, helped The Graduate stand out and resonate with audiences. The Graduate is a classic 1967 film that reflects the societal and personal conflicts of the 1960s. The movie is set in a time when America was grappling with the Vietnam War, and a generation was struggling to find its identity. The film's protagonist, Benjamin Braddock, embodies the anxieties and uncertainties of a young adult trying to navigate his way in the world. Benjamin is a high-achieving college graduate who finds himself at a loss when it comes to deciding his future. He is under pressure from his parents and society to make something of himself, but he is unsure of what he wants. This pressure is a reflection of the societal expectations placed on young people during that time, as well as the personal struggles they faced. The film's director, Mike Nichols, uses humor and satire to critique the values and attitudes of the time. The famous line plastics is a prime example of this, highlighting the superficiality and materialism of the era. The soundtrack by Simon and Garfunkel adds to the film's nostalgic appeal and captures the zeitgeist of the 1960s. The Graduate is also known for its steamy sex scenes and controversial portrayal of female sexuality. Mistress Robinson, played by Anne Bancroft, is a manipulative and sexually aggressive character who uses her charm and allure to seduce Benjamin. While some critics have criticized the film for its objectification of women, others have praised Bancroft's performance for its complexity and nuance. Dustin Hoffman, who plays Benjamin, delivers a standout performance in his film debut. His portrayal of a young man grappling with his emotions and sexuality is both authentic and compelling. The chemistry between Hoffman and Bancroft is electric, making their scenes together some of the most memorable in the film. The Graduate is a seminal film that explores the complexities of growing up in a rapidly changing world. Its themes of identity, sexuality, and societal pressure continue to resonate with audiences today. The film's enduring appeal is a testament to its timeless storytelling and powerful performances. Whether you're a fan of classic cinema or just looking for a thought-provoking film, the Graduate is a must-see. The Graduate, a 1967 film, is renowned for its distinctive music, which significantly contributes to the narrative and emotional tone. The soundtrack, primarily composed by Simon and Garfunkel, includes popular songs like The Sound of Silence, Mistress Robinson, and Scarborough Fair. These tunes, characterized by their folk rock style and poignant lyrics, perfectly capture the film's themes of disillusionment, longing, and rebellion. Paul Simon, one half of the duo, shared that the music was intended to reflect the protagonist, Benjamin Braddock's, inner turmoil and alienation. The lyrics often echo his confusion and desire for connection, thereby enhancing the audience's understanding of his character. The instrumental score, composed by Dave Grusin, complements the film's narrative subtly. Grusin's music, often minimalistic and jazz-infused, underscores the character's emotions without overpowering the scenes. For instance, the haunting piano melodies during Benjamin's aimless drives around town mirror his aimlessness and disillusionment. Interestingly, the film's director, Mike Nichols, initially hesitated to use popular music in a dramatic film. However, he changed his mind after hearing The Sound of Silence, which he felt encapsulated Benjamin's character and the film's overall mood. The fusion of Simon and Garfunkel's songs and Grusin's score creates a rich musical tapestry that deeply resonates with the film's narrative and characters. The music of The Graduate has not only endured as a classic soundtrack, but also marked a significant shift in the use of popular music in film. Marion Lauren's appearance in The Graduate marked her final feature film, as she passed away shortly after its release. Lauren's character, Miss DeWitt, added a unique touch to the movie. Richard Dreyfuss, who played the role of Benjamin Braddock in The Graduate, received an offer to act as Drayton, the American Vice Consul in The Wind and The Lion. This offer came six years after his groundbreaking performance in The Graduate. William Daniels, who portrayed Mr. Braddock in The Graduate, achieved a significant milestone in his career. He was elected president of the Screen Actors Guild, serving a two-year term and overseeing the organization's activities. His election was notable as he defeated Richard Mashur, and Angel Tompkins, who had conjoined her two names to call herself Angel Tompkins on the ballot. One of the most iconic scenes in The Graduate is when Benjamin, played by Dustin Hoffman, is seduced by Mistress Robinson, portrayed by Anne Bancroft. The scene is filled with tension, and the direction by Mike Nichols is subtle yet effective. He uses close-ups to capture the character's expressions, heightening the sense of unease and anticipation. Bancroft's performance is noteworthy. 
she brings a certain vulnerability to Mistress Robinson, making her more than just a seductress. Cinematographer Robert Surtees uses a muted color palette, which adds to the overall mood of the scene. Another memorable scene is the final sequence, where Benjamin crashes Mistress Robinson's daughter's wedding. The chaos and confusion are brilliantly captured through quick cuts and handheld camera work. The use of Simon and Garfunkel's music further enhances the emotional impact of the scene. According to Nichols, the end of the movie is not about whether Benjamin gets the girl or not. It's about the loss of innocence, the end of an era. The scene where Benjamin is seen floating in a pool, listening to music, has also become iconic. It encapsulates the ennui and aimlessness that many young people experience during this transitional phase of life. Hoffman's performance is nuanced. He manages to convey Benjamin's confusion and frustration without saying a word. The cinematography, with its emphasis on wide shots and natural lighting, perfectly captures the monotony of Benjamin's existence. These scenes have had a lasting impact on audiences due to their relatability and emotional depth. They encapsulate the themes of the film, disillusionment, the loss of innocence, and the struggle to find one's identity in a powerful and memorable way. Anne Bancroft, known for her role in The Graduate, led a successful career in acting. She was featured in the Racer, the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives, showcasing her significance. Interestingly, both Murray Hamilton and Richard Dreyfuss, co-stars in The Graduate, appeared together again in Jaws, while Robert Shaw, who acted as Bancroft's husband in Young Winston, was also part of the Jaws cast. In The Graduate, Catherine Ross wore her own wardrobe in the campus scenes, as the director believed her attire perfectly suited the character Elaine. This decision added authenticity to her performance. The Graduate, a 1967 movie, left a significant cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences due to its relatable protagonist, Benjamin, a young college graduate navigating post-education life and adult responsibilities. The film's honest portrayal of aimlessness, disillusionment, and desire for purpose struck a chord with the youth of the time, immersed in anti-establishment sentiments. The Graduate influenced pop culture in various ways. The soundtrack by Simon and Garfunkel became a massive hit, introducing folk rock to a wider audience. The film also made the phrase plastic synonymous with the superficiality of material success. Moreover, the unconventional love story between Benjamin and Mistress Robinson sparked conversations about infidelity, age differences in relationships, and the generational divide. Discussing relevant social and cultural themes, The Graduate critiqued the American dream and its discontents. The film portrayed the emptiness of a life devoted to career advancement and material wealth, contrasting it with Benjamin's pursuit of personal fulfillment. This critique aligned with the countercultural movement's disenchantment with mainstream values, further resonating with audiences. The Graduate's depiction of the emerging sexual revolution also contributed to cultural discussions. The film dared to address taboo subjects like extramarital affairs and premarital sex, albeit subtly. By presenting these topics, it encouraged open conversations about societal norms and expectations. In essence, The Graduate's impact transcended the silver screen, its resonance with audiences, influence on pop culture, and thought-provoking exploration of social and cultural themes solidified its place in cinematic history. In 1967, The Graduate became a cultural milestone with Dustin Hoffman's iconic performance. Interestingly, Raquel Welch and Joan Collins had both expressed interest in playing the role of Elaine Robinson. Off-screen, Hoffman and co-star Gene Hackman shared a bond, often going to the rooftop to play drums, inspired by their admiration for Marlon Brando. Hoffman's career was impacted by spurious charges in the Hash Me Too movement, but he has since resumed his work, set to star in Into the Labyrinth in 2019. The camaraderie between Hoffman and Hackman was a result of their mutual admiration for Brando, as they would play the bongo and conga drums on the rooftop, hoping to emulate their idol. This anecdote offers a glimpse into the off-screen lives of two talented actors who found inspiration in a Hollywood great. The Graduate, a 1967 film directed by Mike Nichols, received high critical acclaim and various awards. The New York Times' Bosley Crowther praised the movie, calling it a brilliant, penetrating comedy about the moral confusions of a young man in his first exposure to the larger world. The film also resonated with audiences, who connected with its themes of disillusionment and rebellion. The Graduate garnered seven Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Director, and Best Adapted Screenplay. It won in the categories of Best Director for Mike Nichols 
and Best Adapted Screenplay for Calder Willingham and Buck Henry. These accolades highlighted the film's innovative storytelling and Nichols' groundbreaking directing style. The film's success meant that those involved in its creation, such as Nichols, Hoffman, and Anne Bancroft, gained recognition for their work and became associated with a pivotal moment in American cinema. The Graduate's impact transcended its time, leaving a lasting mark on popular culture and influencing future filmmakers. In the making of The Graduate, director Mike Nichols and actor Dustin Hoffman employed guerrilla shooting techniques for certain scenes, such as those on university campuses, where people in the background were unaware they were being filmed. This unconventional approach is evident in a scene at the zoo, where Catherine Ross is seen interacting with a man who attempted to pick her up, unaware of the filming. The film also features notable connections between its cast and their real-life associates. Richard Dreyfuss, who has a small role, is friends with Rob Rayner, while Anne Bancroft, who plays a significant character, is married to Mel Brooks, a longtime friend of Carl Reiner. The Taft Hotel scenes in the movie were actually filmed at the historic Ambassador Hotel. The hotel's grand architecture and ambience provided the perfect setting for the film's narrative. Despite the passage of time, The Graduate remains a significant cultural artifact, resonating with audiences even today. The Graduate's production was filled with memorable moments. One incident involved Dustin Hoffman, who played the lead role, being late on set due to his fear of driving on the freeway. To solve this, the director, Mike Nichols, hired a limo service for Hoffman, and Bancroft, who played the infamous Mistress Robinson, had a unique approach to her character. She chose to portray Mistress Robinson as a woman trapped in her own life, which added depth to the character. The film's iconic soundtrack was composed by Simon and Garfunkel. However, the duo was initially hesitant to let their music be used in the film. After much persuasion, they agreed, leading to the creation of a soundtrack that perfectly complemented the movie's themes. The famous scene where Hoffman's character, Benjamin, is stuck in a scuba suit in his apartment was unscripted. Hoffman actually got stuck, and the crew decided to roll with it, capturing some genuine reactions. Despite the film's success, it received mixed reviews upon release. Some critics praised it, while others panned it. However, it resonated with audiences, becoming a box office hit and a cultural phenomenon. The Graduate's production was a mix of planned moments and serendipitous accidents, all contributing to the film's enduring charm. The cast and crew's experiences added layers of depth to the film, making it a compelling watch even today. Robert Redford was initially considered for the lead role in The Graduate, but director Mike Nichols ultimately decided against him. Nichols believed that Redford couldn't convincingly portray the socially awkward qualities required for the character of Benjamin Braddock. This perception clash arose from a conversation where Nichols asked Redford if he had ever struggled to woo a woman, to which Redford replied that he didn't understand the question. Nichols then cast Dustin Hoffman, who brought the desired underdog qualities to the role. The Graduate's journey to the big screen began when producer Lawrence Terman read a review of the novel in the New York Times. He acquired the film rights and decided to stay faithful to the book while creating the movie. Carol Baker was also considered for the role of Elaine Robinson, Benjamin's love interest, but she was deemed too old for the part. Eventually, Catherine Ross was cast as Elaine, and her on-screen chemistry with Dustin Hoffman contributed significantly to the film's success. The Graduate, a 1967 movie, holds a significant place in film history. Its groundbreaking portrayal of post-college malaise and disillusionment resonated with the youth of the time, making it a cultural phenomenon. The film's innovative use of music, particularly Simon and Garfunkel's folk rock, added a new dimension to storytelling and cinema. The Graduate significantly influenced future filmmaking. Its director, Mike Nichols, employed unconventional techniques, such as breaking the fourth wall and using humor to convey serious themes, which inspired many filmmakers that followed. The film's exploration of adult themes through the lens of a young protagonist became a popular narrative device in subsequent films. Movies like The Royal Tenenbaums, American Beauty, and Garden State share thematic similarities with The Graduate. These films explore the complexities of adult life, identity, and disillusionment through the eyes of young protagonists, much like The Graduate did. The film's impact is also evident in the popular trope of the man-child character, seen in films like Failure to Launch and Knocked Up. In addition, the film's iconic poster, featuring a diving Dustin Hoffman, has become an enduring symbol in popular culture.
the graduate's legacy continues to inspire filmmakers and captivate audiences, making it a timeless classic in the world of cinema. Richard Dreyfuss, known for his role in The Goodbye Girl, holds the record as the shortest actor to win an Oscar for Best Actor, standing at 5 foot 4 or 5 inches tall. This record remains unbroken as of 2021. In a notable scene from The Graduate, Dreyfuss' character, Benjamin, screams Elaine while hitting a glass, paying homage to the Flintstones. Before starring in The Graduate, Dustin Hoffman was set to play Franz Liebkind in Mel Brooks's film, The Producers. However, when offered the role of Ben Braddock in The Graduate, co-starring Brooks' wife Anne Bancroft, Hoffman left the producers to accept. The role of Liebkind then went to Kenneth Mars. Imagine sharing your own personal connections to the classic film, The Graduate. This groundbreaking 1967 movie could have left a lasting impression on you. Or perhaps it influenced your view of cinema. By commenting with your experiences and memories, you can contribute to a fascinating conversation with fellow movie enthusiasts. Did you resonate with the characters or their struggles? Or did the film's unique style and storytelling leave a mark on you? Share your thoughts and let us know how The Graduate affected you personally. Your engagement is essential to our community. By liking, sharing, and subscribing, you help us create a vibrant and active film discussion platform. Together, we can explore the rich tapestry of cinematic history and share our love for movies like The Graduate. So, don't be shy, join the conversation, and let your voice be